So this video is for people who are interested in Blade, but want to know what his endgame teams look like and how they play like. And so I've got four teams to show you today, and all of them are going to be attempting this MOC-12. Right now is the perfect time to do this test because it happens to have a wind weak enemy on the first half, meaning it's very easy for me to just test and then reset. So the first team we have is probably my favorite comfort team. It's going to be Unlimited Blade Works with Ron May as the fourth slot. And the reason I like this team a lot is because Ron May has a speed buff that makes building your supports a lot easier. She also makes the stainless runs much more consistent because you get to break enemies really easily and then they stay broken for longer. On top of that, this specific team comp probably allows your blade to hit the highest damage numbers out of the four teams that I'm showing you today. Getting into the run, the game plan is very simple. You just use Sparkle and Branya to cycle blade over and over again. At 134 speed or higher, your Sparkle and Branya should be able to go twice on the first cycle, meaning your blade can go four times. And with Ron May, the speed can actually be lower than 134 because Ron May gives 10% speed buff. In my case, my Branya is at 162 speed and my Sparkle is at 164 speed. And the reason for this is because Sadly, my blade can't zero cycle, and so having 160 speed or more allows you to get two actions even on the next cycle, so on the first cycle. If you were to push your characters close to 200 speed, or like 175 speed with Dance Dance Dance, S5 Dance Dance Dance, then you might be able to squeeze out three actions for your Sparkle and your Branya which means six turns for Blade. And in that scenario, it actually is quite possible to zero cycle. So the play on the second wave, at least from what I found, if you can't zero cycle, is to destroy the, the pet beside Kafka first, or at least weakness break him, because he applies this uncleansable debuff that will stun all your characters if they don't attack him. And with this setup, your Sparkle and Branya ideally don't want to be auto-attacking. They want to be using their skill to bring up Blade. So every time they're forced to skip their skill, your Blade's also losing a turn. In this case, my Sparkle got frozen, which kind of sucked, but basically just means Blade lost one turn. It's not the end of the world. When you're one cycling instead of zero cycling, you have so much more leeway in terms of RNG. So even if things don't go perfectly, we still have a lot of wiggle room. Okay, so now we're on cycle one. The goal now is to just break Kafka. And then with Ron May, basically you can see that these guys stay broken for a long time. And if you're curious about my positioning, I put Blade in the middle just so he has the highest chance of getting hit from splash attacks. And Ron May is in the middle as well because she needs to regen energy the most out of the supports. So I think here I should have waited before using Blade's ultimate if I care about having more HP, but the way I did it is also fine. Because I'm about to kill Kafka anyways. But in like a long drawn out fight, you might want to maximize Blade's HP to prevent him from dying. So here we're going to see hopefully the finishing blow. So that was the zero cycle with Ron May. It was pretty straightforward. Now we're going to move on to Robin. So we're basically subbing Ron May out for Robin, keeping everything else the same. The main difference here is you lose some sustain because Robin doesn't really do much to keep your team alive. But what you get out of it is six blade actions per turn by abusing Robin's ultimate. So how it works is 
you could go you could go about it two ways one way is to hope enemies hit your robin so that after the first round of sparkle blade Branya blade you get to immediately activate robin's ultimate and then that gives you two more rounds of sparkle blade Branya blade but within robin's ultimate now the second way to do it is to wait until the very end of the cycle to use Robin's ultimate to then give you one more turn. So here, Robin didn't get hit. So I think I'm going to hold her ultimate until the end of the cycle. So the game plan is still the same. You use Sparkle and Branya to cycle Blade. And here I pop Robin's ult because it's the end of the cycle. And now I get the 5th and 6th Blade turns. And this will also help me start the next round with Blade's ultimate ready. Now if you're trying to zero cycle, you ideally really want Robin to have her ultimate ready before the cycle ends. Because we're doing a one cycle, it's not as vital to do so, but it would still be nice. We're also doing the same game plan here where we're focused targeting the, the pet over Kafka because we really don't want to get that weird CC thing. I feel like it might be inevitable though, on this run. Yeah, this run is kind of looks like a disaster at this point. So I'm forced to bring up... Branya so that Branya can get out of the state. And then I'll use Branya to bring up Robin. Oh no, I bring up Blade. Yeah, so I guess in this case, because I'm not going for a zero cycle, it doesn't actually matter if Robin gets her ultimate ready by the end of the cycle or not. So Here we kill off the pet so that we're no longer beholden by his CC thing. And now we get guaranteed six actions for Blade on this cycle. So, I think it's pretty much a wrap. We just need to make sure no one dies here. But everyone seems to be healthy. The benefit of a one cycle clear over a zero cycle is you have so much wiggle room. So, like a lot, a lot of times with the zero cycle, especially when you're low Eidolons, everything has to go right. But if you're pushing it to a one cycle, you have a lot of room for error. So... You don't need to reset as much. Okay. And I think we can close this off with his follow-up attack. So I'm going to slow it down. Bam. 85k. <laughs> Damage numbers aren't the highest with Blade, but... Considering he goes six times a turn, that's not bad. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, well, between Ron, May, and Robin, what if we run both of them? And so this is going to be a showcase where we drop Sparkle and we just run both Robin and Ron, May, because why not? And then the game plan here is we can't use base speed blade anymore. Or you could if you wanted to, but now I'm running Blade, Fast Blade, Slow Branya. So Branya is no longer 160 speed, she's now dropped down to 130, and Blade is no longer base 97 speed, I bumped him up to 134 speed. And then with Ron May's speed buff, they're both going to be over the 134 threshold to go twice per turn. And then with Robin, using her ultimate at the end of the cycle, they'll be able to go six times. 
So we'll go Blade, and then Branya. We'll bring Blade back, and then we'll do Blade, Branya, Blade, Robin, Blade, Branya, Blade. And because Blade is buffed by both Robin and Ron May, you should see pretty big damage numbers. And you have the benefit of Ron May's toughness shred, so enemies will break quicker and stay broken for longer. We're going to pop Robin's ult here so that we can kill the first wave off in zero cycles. And then we start wave 2 with his follow-up attack which is quite nice. I'm not popping his ultimate yet because I'm waiting for him to get hit so that I can maximize his ultimate like health Regeneration. Having Branya be the one stunned kind of sucks, but the benefit was she ended up auto attacking Blade, so I got a couple more Blade stacks out of that. And we also kind of got lucky with Kafka's targeting because she kept hitting Blade instead of the other units. And that's good for me because that also increases blade stacks. So I would say hit RNG on this one is a lot better than my previous runs. I think I have to bring up blade here. One to kill off the, the pet and to break Kafka. I was debating auto attacking and putting her behind blade so I can do blade, Branya, blade, and then Robin, blade, Branya, blade, but I think at this point it's more important for me to uh, get rid of the annoying, the annoying pet and to break Kafka so that I don't take any more damage and so I don't leave anything up to chance. Yeah, I definitely have enough damage here because I get to do another round of Blade, Branya Blade. And I have his follow-up attack. So do you see the power of Ranmei? Like Kafka literally never gets gets a turn in this entire cycle. So you basically eliminate the need of a support altogether. Oh, 1% left. We have to pop the ult here, which is kind of nice too. End the fight off with his ultimate. And that's using both Robin and Ron May on the same team. Okay, now we're going into the fun team comp now. This one, we're running Jade instead of Robin. So, I haven't made too many videos on Jade since I got her. I haven't made too many videos in general. But I've been having a lot of fun with Jade. She's definitely a pure fiction monster, but if you have E1, she does really, really well in Memory of Chaos too. Here, Blade is not at 134 speed. He's at a weird number where I'm running HP boots instead of speed boots, but I gave him a couple pieces that have speed on them just so that he go goes above 104 speed. And the reason he should be above 104 speed is because when we have Jade giving him a bonus 30 speed, we want him to have more speed than Branya, so that he can overtake Branya and we can do the Blade Branya Blade thing. Because how Jade works is she gives your designated character 30 speed, and I'm running Branya at 134 speed, so Blade just needs to be at 105 speed or more, so that when you add 30 to it, it would overtake Branya. This way, we have four Blade turns on the first cycle, but we also have Jade doing damage, and both of them, both Blade and Jade, are being buffed by Ronmei. So that's how this team works. 
this team is a, is much more expensive than than my previous teams. I think the cheapest team I have is the Robin team, the Robin Unlimited Blade Works, and then the comfiest team is probably the Ron May Unlimited Blade Works. This team is the most expensive because Jade is E1, Ron May is E1, and Branya is E1. I don't think Ron May E1 is necessary, and. Branya's E1 also isn't really necessary here because we're not hurting for skill points at all because both Blade and Jade are quite skill point efficient. Jade's technically a skill point positive and Blade is skill point neutral. Either way though, people who watch this are going to say that I have Eidolons on all my characters, so I do have to point that out. So this is the most expensive team because Jade E1 is pretty necessary, at least in my opinion, and it's also the least comfortable team to play because you really don't want Jade to get hit at all. Jade is not tanky whatsoever. With your supports, you could build HP orbs or like defense orbs and make them quite tanky, but Jade needs to run damage, and so this actually requires some resetting to make sure that the mobs don't focus fire Jade early because otherwise she won't live long enough to see out the whole fight. So as fun as this team is, it's a lot less consistent than the other ones. So we killed off the pet, and now we just need to deal with Kafka. Unfortunately, I can't break Kafka before her turn is up, so she does get to go. But luckily, she hit Blade, so now I can break her. So those were four different blade team comps, all of which were capable of one cycling the MOC. If I were to rank comfort and consistency, it would be Ron May Unlimited Blade Works first, followed by Ron May Robin Branya Blade, then Robin's Unlimited Blade Works, and then lastly Jade. And that's purely because Jade is squishy and you really don't want her to get hit. If there's some way to get Blade taunted, then the J team might actually be one of the strongest out of the bunch. But if you're relying just on RNG for Blade to get hit, then it's not as reliable as the other ones. So if you're interested in Blade, what characters would I recommend pulling for? Well, obviously I think Branya is a character that you should look into getting because she is probably till this day still one of Blade's best supports. And then it's your choice between Robin or Ron May. I feel like either one is good for your account in general. Like even if you decide you don't want to play Blade anymore, having a Robin or a Ron May won't really hurt you because you can put them in other other teams. Jade, on the other hand, she can be used with other characters, right? She's not just a blade support, but most of her scenarios are in pure fiction. And outside of pure fiction, you really need to know what you're doing with Jade. She's not as plug and play as Robin or Ron May. So I would rank her a little lower than them. I still find her really fun, but I also have her at E1. So I'm not so sure her value at E0 because at this point, I'm kind of unrelatable because I got her E1. If you're considering other teammates, I am working on a Blade teammates tier list. The problem is I don't have every character in the game and I don't have access to like a testing ground where I can just have access to every character fully built. So I can't really say for certain whether some characters are good or not. I also am not privy to leaks, so I don't know if any future characters that are coming out will benefit Blade in any way. And these four team comps I showed you today aren't the only team comps Blade can work with. He is quite flexible as a unit. These are just the teammates that I happen to have on my account that work the best for me personally.